In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to use image sequences in Adobe After Effects, and I'll talk about why image sequences are awesome to use in many rendering situations. First, I'll show you how to render your movie into an image sequence. In the next part, I'll show you how to import an image sequence into a movie, and as an example, I'm going to render images from a time lapse into a movie. So why would you want to use an image sequence? An image sequence has many advantages over rendering into a movie. You can reduce the chance of an error or a crash during the rendering sequence. Uh, when you render into a movie, if an error occurs during the render, the entire render will fail. But if you render into an image sequence, you can pick up at the last image in the sequence and continue rendering from there. When you render into an image sequence, you can use multi-machine rendering for faster renders. You can check out one of my video tutorials on how to use multi-machine rendering for faster rendering. With image sequences, you can achieve high color depth. In this clip, there's a three-dimensional character, some text, there's some uh, animated heads-up displays that are tracked onto the 3D character. I'm going to select a, a small region of this clip and export an image sequence. And the reason I want to do that is because all of the stuff going on in this scene take quite a while to render and I want to pre-render into an image sequence. So go to Composition, Add to Render Queue, click the Render Settings, you can use the settings here. Looking at the Output Module, go up to Format, pull down the menu. Here you can see all of the image sequence formats. JPEG, JPEG 2000, uh, PNG, which is really common, Photoshop, TIFF. In this example, I'm going to use JPEG. Uh, we're just using 8 bits here, millions of colors. For here, I'm just going to use JPEG Quality 9. You'll be surprised at how well JPEG image sequence come out. Here, just click OK and uh, select the folder you want to output the image sequence to and click Render. Now that I've rendered uh, a small portion of this 3D character, I want to import it back into my project. So find the image sequence, click on the first image of the sequence, make sure that image sequence is selected at the bottom, and click open. Find the image sequence, here I'll drag it into a new composition. Alright, and you can see that the, the preview is really fast, uh, the preview is much faster, this is pre-rendered into a JPEG image sequence, and it's looking pretty good, although it's just in JPEG. Here's a pre-rendered image sequence that I have in a movie, and let's zoom in here. So image sequences tend to preview pretty fast, so it makes it easy to edit your video. Okay, let's say you want to work in a 16-bit color space, alright? You want everything to be a little higher resolution, maybe you've done some color grading. Let's add to the render queue, click the output module. Let's take a look at some of the other image sequence formats. PNG is really common for 16 bits, uh, you can choose trillions of color. Uh, some people prefer to use Photoshop. Here's an example of high dynamic range video. So there's a lot of color information here. I'm going to work in 16-bit per channel color depth. And typically in these kind of images where you have a sun and the sky, you get this crazy color gradient and you get these banding artifacts in the sky. So this is a typical example of where you want to use a 16-bit per channel color depth. So here I choose 16 bits per channel. You want to stay away from using JPEG, but JPEG 2000 is actually a really good format, supports 16 bit color depth and uh, trillions of colors. Here I choose uh, JPEG 2000. If you want to download this, check in the, in the description. I'll provide a link to download this awesome codec. Here's some settings that tend to work really well for small file size but high image quality. So here I'm going to export to this folder, click save, and begin the render. Okay, when the render is complete, let's see how we did. Go to the file menu, select import file, select the first file on the list, and click open. Let's drag our image sequence into a new composition, and you can see the preview happens pretty fast. I exported in 16-bit with trillions of colors. I don't have to worry about those uh, sky artifacts or sky banding that occurs in an 8-bit per channel color depth. Although if you watch this on YouTube, you probably won't be able to tell the increased video quality. I'll attach some of the project files to this video so you can download and check the quality for yourself. Alright, um, if you don't have JPEG 2000 or uh, you're unwilling or unable to use it, you can use PNG so you can try that as well. 
So in this next part, let's take a look at importing an image sequence and let's use time lapse as an example. All right, so here's a time lapse I took with my Canon T3i. So let me show you how I got here. Let's work in a 16 bit per channel color depth, make a new composition. Here I'll use a 1080 at 29.97 frames per second. Go to file menu, import file, select the first image in the image sequence and select these boxes here and drag the image sequence into the timeline. First of all, you can see the image needs to be resized, but we also have to interpret the footage. Uh, right click on the image sequence, select interpret footage, main, and we're gonna use 12 frames per second. All right, click OK. And you can see what that did to the image sequence. Just pull this to the left and expand the image sequence all the way. Press S on your keyboard to scale, and let's scale it down a bit so it fits in our 1080 frame. You know, you can adjust the frame rate a bit to fit your needs. So take a look at the frame rate. The lower FPS you use, uh, you might get a very choppy video, so you might have to increase that a little bit to make it smoother. So now I've got this uh, time-lapse image sequence in After Effects on the timeline. I uh, corrected some flicker, I added some color grading, and now I can export this as a movie. All right, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video and you like the channel, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and uh, have fun.